guys, this is Svetlana from Kamui Cosplay and today is my birthday. I'm turning today 34 and well, since I'm now so old and wise and I'm cosplaying actually now for 17 years, this is like, this is probably like longer than you are on the planet. Like I know what a floppy disk is. I existed before the internet. I know how a Walkman looks like. So yes, I'm the living proof that even very, very old people can cosplay just like me. And well, since I'm so wise, I want to give something to the younger generation just before I die, like to people who are like 33. And well, so today I'm giving 10 tips on how to become more eco-friendly with cosplay. I mean, let's be honest, cosplay is not the most eco-friendly hobby. I mean, you know, like at the beginning, you order some materials, probably from the other end of the world to create something. Often it's even something that is just pretty and you might even don't need at the end. Like you create a lot of waste while working with the material and it's often even toxic and cannot be recycled. And then you also fly to the convention just to wear this costume for a single day and then you have no idea what to do with it. And all of this creates a lot of waste, needs a lot of energy and produce a lot of CO2, which is not that nice. This doesn't mean that you have to stop with cosplay. It's such an amazing hobby and I love it just as much as you do. But there are plenty of easy ways to avoid you know, all these things and become a little bit more eco-friendly. So let's start. Number one, shop smart. So in general, cosplayers buy a lot of stuff just because it's pretty, because they just need it for something in the near future, maybe, or just because they want it. And you know, all this stuff just piles up over the years and this is not really smart. So if you're planning a costume and go on a shopping tour, really buy only that stuff you need for this specific costume and nothing else. I, for example, have samples of each fabric I own in a sample collection. So when I go for shopping, I just check out my collection and can see directly if I already own this fabric and if I really, really need it. Another way to do smart shopping is actually to ordering basic materials you need for plenty of projects in big orders. For example, wobbler, EVA foam, primers, glues, all that stuff you need for various of different costumes. It actually really makes sense to make one large order, which you might even share with your friends. I, for myself, I make one single order in half a year of EVA foam, and I even have flex bond in a huge 10 liter bottle, which I just use to fill up my smaller bottles so I can keep priming all my projects in I think the last three years actually. Number two, donate old materials. Of course it's almost impossible to use up everything you bought and you will always have some leftover fabrics or in simply some beads or other materials you don't need. But instead of just piling this up for years and just storaging it in your workspace, you can actually donate the stuff and for example do material exchange parties for your friends and people who want to make this materials into something cool and awesome. Well, and since I'm so old that I already collected materials for the last few centuries, I actually invite my friends a couple of times in a year and give them all my stuff so they can make cool costumes. And I actually also have a friend who works in the library and she has a cosplay club where people are actually able to donate their leftover materials like fabrics and all that stuff and make the kids there really, really happy. And I think this is a really cool idea. So in case you don't have any material exchange parties next to you, or cosplay clubs, then it's about time to make one. Number three, finish old costumes before starting new ones. <laughs> Fatality. Actually, last year I started with uh, Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, which is almost done. Brigitte from Overwatch, which is right now in progress. Uh, Taki from Soul Calibur 6, which still needs some works. 
and Reka from Guns, which is totally at the beginning. But I really want to do a new Monster Hunter costume from Ice Bond, but I won't. You know, like I know the feeling and you know, this is like the thing that I'm struggling with the most. Like you see something really, really cool and you want to start with it instantly and order like everything and like all your other costumes are waiting in the corner and like finish me first. And so as the adult I am, I will finish first my current project before I start with the new Montana and I hope you can join me with this fight because it's really, really tough. So, yeah, good luck. Number four, wear costumes more often. We put so much time and energy and materials into creating our costumes. And while it's really, really exciting to show off a new project at a convention, I think it's a little bit wasteful if you wear a costume only for one day at only one convention and then it's basically gone. So I personally, I try to get the maximum out of my costumes. For example, my barbarian and also the monk. I wore them like for 20 or 40 times. Actually, the costumes were falling apart at this point, which I think is good. And in addition, I also made patterns. I used the pictures for my books. I made several photo shoots. I made video tutorials and I tried to use the costumes just as much as possible. I mean, you can even go even further. You can also sell the costumes. You can give them away to your friends, but I know this is very personal, but you might consider that as well. And yeah, you know, just give your costumes more love and then you also don't need to create a new costume for every single day at the convention and save a lot of waste and energy and see you too. And this brings me directly to number five. Maybe do a little bit smaller project. When I was working on my Tenore, it was already pretty cool and awesome. And I thought I could do something even bigger. So my next project was Nergi Gundam, which was already pretty cool. And then I thought I could do something even bigger. And this um, led me to Brigitte, which is still not done and takes me a lot of time and energy and materials and also creates a lot of waste, which is not so good. So I, for myself, I want to focus now on smaller projects and also do like more little tutorials for YouTube or do like cool little props. And you know, yes, it's really cool to wear really awesome and big, crazy, huge armor at the convention. But uh, you know, you could also just were like something smaller and like more sexy and you know based on video game logic the less you wear and even if your boobs are like covered with tiny little triangles the more defense you have <laughs> <laughs> And in addition, you know, you also save a lot of waste and energy and, you know, like CO2. So the next time when you see a sexy cosplayer and think like, oh, she's really naked, she should put some clothes on, think about that this person is actually saving the planet. So thank you, sexy cosplayer. Number six, accuracy is not everything. You know the story, you want to cosplay a specific character, you order a wig and the product you got doesn't really have the right shade. So you go again on eBay, check if you find something better and are not really sure if the next one will be even better. So you know, in Germany we have a saying which is called Posture. So if it's not really worth to fix it, if it's anyway quite okay, and if nobody will notice it anyway, then it's Basture. So go to a convention, be proud of your own creative touches you added to your costume and to the cool fabrics and materials which are not 100% perfect but still look cool and you finish your costume, be happy and everything is bust job. Number seven, shop locally if you can. Transportation of products 
produces a lot of CO2 and requires energy. So it's actually much better to buy stuff locally instead of ordering it from around the globe. Uh, the one problem is that most of our cosplay crafting materials are actually produced in China. And well, to buy locally, we actually have to move to China, which is probably not an option. But well, what you can do is actually to buy at your local store. And I mean, yes, your local store surely buys this stuff in China, but mostly only with one order and especially shipping it everything by a um, ship. And well, now imagine this shop actually buys like uh, 1000 EVA foam sheets and spreads it over the US or 1000 uh, cosplayers want to order some EVA foam and place 1000 orders directly in China and get like 1000 uh, orders by air over half of the globe. So really think about what's more efficient and what produces less CO2. And well, and in addition, if you support your local shop, like this people are also able to offer you more cool crafting materials. Number eight, try to reduce waste. Some materials produce more and some materials produce less waste. For example, when I was working on my Neo Gigante costume, I had to create around 800 of separate spikes for the costume. So one option was actually to make some sculptings out of clay to cover them with silicone, then to do like a fiberglass on top and do some molding and casting with it. And this would save me a lot of time, but it would also create a lot of waste because the silicone and the fiberglass and also the mixing cups would go directly into the trash bin and are also very very difficult to recycle. So my alternative was foam clay and it took me a little bit longer since I had to sculpt every single spike individually and well but the result was that I was able to use 100% of the material and put it directly into this costume without really creating any waste except like the cups where the material was delivered in and well also these days I'm working a lot with EV foam and I try to get the maximum out of the material. This means that I keep the um, uh, scrap pieces and put them in my scrap piece bin and when I use something um, smaller, when I have to cut out something smaller, I just grab some of these smaller pieces instead of grabbing a whole new sheet and cutting out something out of that. So this way I'm able to reduce my waste and also save some money and uh, well keep my trash bin kind of empty hopefully. Something you also want to consider is for example warbler which is also a great material for armor and prop making and the good thing about that is that you are able to heat up the leftovers and are also able to use it for little details, for sculptings or for beveled edges and all kind of that. Also a 3D printer is also an amazing tool since it's using around like 80 or even 90% of the material which goes directly into the print and you only have to get rid of the support material and that's pretty much it. So if you're searching for great alternatives, check out these ones as well. Number nine, keep conventions special. Visiting a convention is the highlight for every cosplay. It's a place where you show off your new creation and can be super proud of your new costume. <laughs> so, well, but the problem is that visiting conventions by, especially by plane, creates a lot of CO2 and takes a lot of energy. So, you know, that's quite problematic, especially if it's a long distance flight. So, for example, I'm a huge fan of BlizzCon, but it's not really that good to visit visit BlizzCon and also DragonCon or Katsukan and like all of these cool cons every single year and especially at some point it might also become a little bit more boring and not that exciting anymore. So I personally I took a break and came back to BlizzCon last year after not going for I think two or three years and suddenly it became the best BlizzCon I've ever attended and that's really cool. So this way you're able not to only save a lot of CO2 but also make your favorite convention more exciting and also a great way is also maybe to explore local conventions and find new friends there. I mean, you know, the travel time, it's much shorter. You can also, you know, like pack your costumes much easier if you're traveling by car and you can maybe finally find some friends for material exchange parties or cosplay crafting sessions. 
Well, and last but not least, our very final last point, number 10, changing your lifestyle. At the very end though, cosplay is still a not very eco-friendly hobby, no matter what you really do. Except you stop cosplaying and I don't want to stop cosplaying. So for myself, I personally try to compensate that in aspects of my life which are not so important for me as cosplay. This means I stopped uh, eating and like consuming any animal products like I became vegan and uh, yeah I also try to reduce my consumption of plastic by buying all my foods which are basically all local in shops that offer all that stuff without any packaging and plastic and you have to bring actually your own boxes and then they fill it in and everything that's really cool and in addition I also stopped attending conventions which require plane tickets so all the cons I visit now I go to them with, uh, by, by plane or by car and in addition I also don't follow any uh, uh, um, clothing fashion trends like you maybe noticed because this dress is like already five years old and like I just keep on repeating wearing all of my dresses until they fall apart but yeah basically you know I love cosplay I want to keep on doing it but at the same time I also don't want to pretend that like everything is nice and pretty and like climate change is not a thing so I personally try to change other things and uh, try to do it as good as I can well, and these were all my 10 points on how to become more eco-friendly when it comes to cosplay. And you know, like no one of us is perfect, especially I did all of this 10 points wrong by myself. Like I bought pretty fabric, I bought stuff that I don't really need. I flew to plenty of conventions and like I did all the things and that's okay. But it's about trying better and you know, just to also really think about your consumption and like, you know, think about your life and uh, becoming a better person, hopefully. And well, I know that this won't change anything. I know that, you know, like even if it's an extreme matter, it won't stop climate change, it won't stop Australia from burning and it won't stop all the natural catastrophes. And like, it, nothing will change. But like, if everyone thinks like that, you know, like if everyone thinks, oh, what about like this person? What about like this industry? What about this government? They also don't do anything. Why should I do anything? That then never anything will change. And you know, like um, I wish for myself for this birthday that maybe this video will inspire only one single person to think about their life and then I will be happy. For more information and also inspiration, uh, I actually linked a few documentaries down in the video description below and they really helped me to understand like the whole thing and like really think about everything. And well, in the next video, I will come back with more crafting and yeah, don't forget, it's my birthday. So like and subscribe <laughs> and uh, well, see you in the next video. Bye bye.